Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today's video is all about trellising. Every year I like to go over trellising options. We're also gonna talk about staking, like staking up your tomato plants. Gonna give you lots of options that maybe you'll wanna use in your garden. Being December, here in Maryland, the frost has come, so we've got the bare bones of the garden. So this is really a great time to show off the different trellises in my garden. If you wanna subscribe and follow me, every year I show people how to start plants indoors in January and then just do everything that you see out here. So you can watch along for 2024 and just learn how to grow a garden. So let's start with the ladder. This ladder was 10 bucks, got it at a yard sale. Make, they make excellent trellises. You can see you can grow up both sides. This one's six feet tall. You could put wire mesh on there if you want, or even string or something like that if you want to weave the plants in more. You could paint this, you can do all kinds of different things. Down on the ground is a T-post. These are solid metal, very sturdy. They cost more than like a wood stake or something like that. But I use these for my tomato plants. I have a place set up in a garden, we'll probably walk by it. These are gonna last forever really. They're gonna outlast us. You just put them in the ground, they're solid, and they're not gonna go away. When you use wood or something cheaper, that wood usually begins to decay at the bottom, even if it's treated, and it rots and it breaks and you have to replace it. The T-post, these last really forever. Let's go over here. I just did a video maybe a couple months ago on this build, so check out the video description. This serves two purposes. I like to create things that have multiple purposes. So we're outside my main garden. This is just chicken wire and a frame, and it sits like this, well, close to this, to keep deer from coming in and eating what's under there. Over time, I can turn this into a trellis. I can just raise it up like this. We can grow lighter crops, peas, beans up this. This can create shade by growing the peas and beans. Underneath, it'll stay cooler. I can maybe extend the season and grow leafy greens. So when that heat of the summer comes, leafy greens tend to bolt and flower and you just can't grow them. By creating a trellis, creating shade, you can grow other crops, kind of make a microclimate underneath of that. Let's walk over here. I don't have a video on this because I just built it not too long ago. Again, being winter, well, getting close to winter here in Maryland, you're really going to be able to see all the trellising. So this is for my grapevine. Two by fours, you get the idea for the basic shape. This will be completely covered when all the leaves of the grapevine come out. And you just set it up like this. It doesn't have to be fancy. You don't have to follow exactly how I've created stuff. I just want to give you the idea ideas. T-post down the back, that's going to last forever. Um, tied the boards to that, the boards are in the ground, etc. But this will be perfect for growing a grapevine. And if you haven't grown grapevines before, they get out of control. So I'm just going to keep this pruned to the shape of this, you know, trellis here. And I think things are going to look really good. Okay, let's go walk into the main garden. Well, before I walk into there, let's take a stop here. These are six foot thin bamboo poles. Bamboo really lasts for a long time. These are thinner. I use these for my pepper plants. You can see what's left behind. Work really nicely for basic staking. This is some old fencing. It's rusted out. It's hard to see. So when you're back further, it kind of blends into the background. I just kept it in its cylinder shape. Let me see if you can see it better up here. And you can use this as a trellis. One, it protects, if I grow something in the center, keeps the deer from getting in there. But you can plant along the edges and along the bottom. You can grow peas, beans, other crops up through here. You can do a mix of things, like you can have maybe a melon plant growing, and then the melon grows up through here, goes back down the other side. You don't have to put everything up the trellis. You can go up a trellis, down the trellis, up a trellis, down a trellis, and it really helps you save space and grow different things. And you can see in the space here, this is where I had tomatoes before, the T-posts are right in there. Let's take a look at this. So you can also buy U-posts, and you're going to see the top is bent. U-posts are thinner, shape of a U. Fencing clicks on here, I'll show you how I use that. I use this more for supporting fencing, for trellising but you can use it for different purposes. Like you could stake a tomato to this, um, but they're a little more fragile. 
but these are going to last for a long time too. So you go with like bamboo or wood, then you can go to metal, just depends on what your budget is. This is masonry mesh. Now it comes in 10 foot sections, you can see that it's rainbowed here. It can be hard to find, it's for brickwork. Like I find this at some home depots, it's not expensive and I just rainbow it, it bends really easily from one side to the other and you can grow different crops on there. You can make something funky like this. This was for a really tall growing bean. So I just have tied at the top two of those ladder meshes. They're called, it's called ladder mesh if you're looking for it. And then some wooden stakes into the ground and then I just weave it through the stake and it's nice and secure and I was actually growing um, Asian yard long beans on here during the summer. These are you know, basic wooden posts that you can get at the big box stores. They do decay eventually, but they're functional. You can use them to help build your trellises and you can use them for staking. And you can see that if I was growing something in here, you know, I have this nice rainbowed trellis set up. Very easy to use. Here's another example. This was for my sweet potatoes. In the back are sweet potatoes and I was having the vines grow up this. And this is a better example of how big you can make the trellis, let's get a little bit closer, with the mesh, the ladder mesh. And then again, it's supported with the wood and you can grow really anything on there. Okay, let's step inside. Now, the fence, of course, is a place to trellis. I have metal beds up against here and I grow cucumbers and different plants. Sometimes I weave tomatoes through it. So fencing is definitely a way to trellis. This is concrete mesh with all the cow peas on there. And I can drop these in in different ways, just into the side, into my fabric pots. I sell all this at my seed shop too, by the way, all the fabric pots. And I just bend it into shape. This is a, I think a hundred gallon uh, fabric pot and I grew cucumbers and then I grew beans up it. It's a nice way to really trellis different plants. Do you find this um, at Home Depot too? The prices are going to vary year to year like with supply chain issues over the last couple of years this got really expensive. Metal tomato cages when I'm not caging a pepper plant or a tomato plant and this is the thicker gauge. We'll see some of the uh, cheaper ones that are like really flimsy. You do want to get something that's more solid if you're buying these cages. They last much longer. I just put in a group of four here and I grew my peas up them. So you can use them for trellising. Well, a couple more quick examples. Tomato cage, the thicker gauge, multiple uses. These were from maybe Gardener Supply. These came from my mom. People always ask me, where did I get these from? This is a tomato cage that's, this is probably 10 years old now. Um, you can grow different crops up it if you want. Nice and solid. Plastic coated metal posts. These are kind of flimsy. If they bend down at the bottom, they do collapse and then you lose a piece because the metal just collapses. But they are great for trellising too. Another example of the cage. And you can see that I have more, that's a T-post, more cages, etc. Basic wooden stake. You can kind of create all kinds of different things. Here's a good example of what I was just talking about using the concrete mesh. Different than ladder mesh. This is what you put down like when you're doing sidewalks and pouring foundations. You put this metal in, it makes the concrete stronger with the sense that it's got metal in it. But we can repurpose it and make a little trellis out of it. More of the ladder mesh, all kinds of different purposes. And I cut these to different sizes and there's um, one, two, three pieces in here and they're just, you know, put in one side, taken to the other side and it just creates a dome that you can grow all kinds of different things. Here's one with just two pieces. And what I hope is I just help get your creative thinking going and you can think about how you want to use these in your garden. So here are U posts and you can see that I've just set them up. This is a thinner gauge 
or just a thinner thickness of fencing and they just drop into these little grooves here and I'll grow beans up this. I've grown acorn squash. Here is the concrete mesh. Instead of it being on the ground and bent, it goes straight up and I grow my butternut squash on that. And it's again sunk into just basic U posts. It's nice and secure and this is that would stay there, you know, for 10 years. It's not going to go anywhere. These are 10 foot sections of closet wire rack. You buy these at Home Depot, any big box store, secured with some metal wire. I just got tired of the jute um, kind of decaying over the year and then I have to replace it. So I use a little bit of metal wire. Perfect. 10 feet tall for growing crops straight up there. And these have been, I brought these over to this property. I've been here five years. They were at my other property. These are going to last a good seven, ten years, if not longer. But you can use the closet racks from the big box stores or when you go to yard sales or garage sales or repurposing stores, you can go ahead and pick them up. I've got some smaller versions that were right in here. You can get U posts in any size. And these were just four foot, I think, sections of the wire rack. And I just made a wall through here, vertical, and I would grow my cucumbers along there. So we'll get to this. This is something that I just made. It's eight feet tall. I want to grow more melons, heavier crops. So I created this. This video for this build will be in the video description, but it's beautiful. We'll get to that in a second. Cattle panel, four feet wide. I think they're 16 feet long. You're going to need a truck to move them. Hopefully you have a friend if you don't have a truck. They're now probably $25 or $30, but this is a four foot by eight foot bed. It's taken across this way. Gives you almost a six foot, seven foot space in between, and you can grow whatever you want up this. This is solid. This is not going to go anywhere. Basic PVC pipe, chicken wire. This makes, let's put it over here. This makes a really basic, lightweight trellis. What I like to do is put a piece of metal rebar right into the ground and leave maybe six or eight inches. And then the PVC pipe just slips right over that rebar. I'll show you what that is as we get to it. And you can put a trellis on. Just weave the PVC. This is probably a half inch piece, uh, maybe three quarters. Weave the chicken wire through there and you can grow on it. This is made from two by four by eights. The build will really explain it to you, but I just use some hinges right up at the top. This will collapse and close. It can be used anywhere and it's just massive. I'll probably end up staining this to protect it a little bit. Let's keep walking down this way. Other ways that I use cattle panel. This is a four foot space about right here. Those are U-posts. I just put in the U-posts and then I put the cattle panel right in between and it makes this really nice arch that's not even secured to here. The cattle, paddle, cattle panel wants to spring out. The U-posts keep it in place and what I do is I grow cucumbers up this. Cucumbers on this side, cucumbers on that side. This is the flimsier cages. I use these for pepper plants. They're not much use for tomatoes because they're not strong enough. But again, you could grow peas or something up this. And you'll see different examples of the cattle panel as I walk around. Here's a combination of three quarter inch PVC, the ladder mesh, and I just weave it that way. We can grow plants on there. And for an example, this is the rebar. You buy this at the big box stores too. You can buy it in different sizes, hammer it in the ground, and you just slide the PVC. The trick is whatever size PVC pipe you buy, you want to just make sure it's going to slide over the rebar. This isn't going to go anywhere. Across the way, you saw, or you can see the T-posts. These are eight foot T-posts. This is where I grow nine tomato plants, have the closet rack on the side for some beans, and I can just grow, you know, right in here. This, <laughs> that white piece isn't supposed to be there, but you can do all kinds of stuff. You know, eight foot wood posts, ladder mesh, all the way up to the top. Um, these kind of move and blow in the wind, it's kind of cool. 
shorter version of the ladder mesh PVC pipe. This is a heavy duty trellis that I grow cantaloupe up. It is made from deck railing and they're just hinges right here. I'll put this in the video description and it collapses. So you can pick this up and you can move it. But I like the ability, like this can be moved anywhere, change it in any direction. Here's a piece of cattle panel in some raised beds. The uh, southern sun usually is, well, isn't usually, it's always behind me. And I set this up so that I could grow cucumbers up this side and then create a shade environment in here. I'm going to change it up now because I filled this up with strawberry plants, but I used to grow different crops in here. But this is just a nice way to use the cattle panel. Just wanted to cut in real quick to show you what chicken wire is. Here's another use of the A-frame. It's nice and small. It's in a little metal raised bed. This is basic chicken wire. You can get it in all kinds of widths and lengths. It's not really expensive and it's really good for lightweight trellising. Just a thin wire and you can really put it on anything. And just real quick, I was also using sunflowers. These are mammoth sunflowers. You can see what's left. I was growing plants up those. So you can use sunflowers as a way to trellis some of your lighter vining crops. More cattle panel. This is a double tunnel. These are blackberries, but I used to grow tomatoes up this side, tomatoes up the other side. Blackberries kind of crept over this way. So, and I love blackberries, so they're good to stay. Just want to show you how I built this. This is just constructed with two by fours. One two by four goes down the length of the eight foot raised bed. And then I just put some sides on it and a cattle panel fits right in here. This would actually pop out if I want to get rid of it. This has been here for five years. It's not going anywhere. The U post right there is for a little bit extra support. And I have this beautiful tunnel for growing whatever I want up the sides. And what I designed this for was being able to walk through from one end, come this way, and these were all cherry tomatoes, different colors, different shapes. And by the time you come out this side, you'd have a bowl full of all kinds of cherry tomatoes. More T posts that I'm using for tomato plants. This is out of place, but this is a basic A-frame trellis. Got this at a hardware store years ago. It had no name on it. They were just selling them. And you could take, and you can see that it makes an A shape. Let me step back here. And you could put a couple of them just like this all the way down and you could weave the battery cutouts. <laughs> Let me just pick up from here. So you could just drop these in and you could, you know, just use one and you just go up one side, down the other, or you can grow two different crops up the sides. You could also drop them in one right there, another one there, third one over there. And for instance, something like a pumpkin plant, you could plant here, grow up one side, down the other, let the root or let the vine contact the ground. Pumpkin plants tend to root out again. That gives them a little bit more protection against vine borers. And then you go back up the next A-frame trellis and then back down. So you can use these in all kinds of different ways. Over on this side, I'm just using those weaker tomato cages for my pepper plants. In here, that is wire. That's actually wire for electric fencing. It's really inexpensive. U-post, this is my asparagus patch all the way down to another U-post, and I just have the metal wire through there. It looks a mess, but when the asparagus comes in, it's massive. It fills this out, and I weave the asparagus through there. Now, when you harvest, if you haven't grown asparagus before, what we buy in the stores is when it first breaks the ground, you know, it gets 12 inches tall, we break it off. If you let that grow, these plants will get five feet tall, so they need to be contained a little bit. So this is how I contain the asparagus plants. Along my fence, depending on where I'm growing, I can grow up and you can see remains of tomato plants back there. They were actually compost tomatoes. They grew out of the compost. But I grow up the fencing and then I have a piece of wire going across the top if I want to put vine crops or something along there. As we come over here, you can see that I have muscadines and I've these are all going to be cut back harshly. Every year you cut them back really harsh. But I will put them along the piece of wire that's across the top and then inside of there, is more cattle panel. I think there's three pieces in there. So that's a cattle panel tunnel that is covered and dark by the muscadines. It's really, really cool. I wanted to cut in real quick again, just to give you a look at the fencing I use for heavier trellising crops. This is great for butternut squash, anything really. It's nice and thick. The lower the gauge, the thicker the wire. 
I get this in the biggest roll that I can. It's cheaper that way, and I use it for different things. I've used it here. I have plenty of videos on that if you want to check out my channel on composting. But I just wrap the wire around some posts. If you don't want to spend the money on a post, you can just create a circle with the wire, put your leaves in there. If you haven't started composting and you have the room, I highly recommend it. It's going to save you a ton of money, and it's really good for your garden. You're going to get better production out of it. But this is the basic fencing for all, building really all kinds of trellises, the ones that I'm showing you today in the video. Blackberries. T posts in here. Blackberries get really tall. They, they can get 12 feet tall. So the canes that are going to produce next year will continue to grow. They need to be managed. So T posts, I like using some sort of thicker and stronger rope that's going to last because I don't want to keep replacing it every year. If you use cotton or jute, you always have to replace it. Just weave the brambles up through there. Nice wall of blackberries. Okay, let's step into here. And you get the idea that you don't need a lot of different types of trellis. You can use the same materials in different ways to build different types of trellising. So you can find these supplies, usually at your big box stores. You can put them together in different ways that are going to work for you in your garden. This is where I grow my hops. These are telescoping poles. Um, I don't know, they were like 40 bucks. These are for like putting a birdhouse on top. And let me just show you them. These are cemented into the ground because they hold a lot of weight. And they just telescope. So I would just pull this piece out right here. And then this is going to drop down. Then I get to, let's see if we can see it. The next level right there, I would pull that piece out. And this is all going to collapse to about six feet tall. And then I can raise it, depending on, you know, what you want to grow on it. You could even put a birdhouse up on there. The other thing that's kind of cool, this is set up with dwarf um, nectarine and plum trees. I'm going to grow some beans in here. And I will let the beans grow up the tree. So the tree itself is going to be trellising. It's not going to impact the fruit development. It's not going to harm the trunk or anything like that. So it's a really cool way to use a tree as a trellis. Let me just take a look to see if I have anything else, really. I mean, I think I covered most of it. These are the basic designs I use. As we walk through, stuff is out of place. Again, please, again, please subscribe and follow me and I will just teach you how to grow a garden. Basic bamboo posts, metal posts. These, this is where I grow 14 bell pepper plants. They grow really well in this container, so I do this every year. Trellising really does make a difference, especially if you have a small space. Growing vertically is a great way to help manage pests and disease. Gives you more room to grow. I mean, vertical growing too is with these towers. Not technically a trellis, but the plants are all put into the pockets. You're growing upwards, really safe space. I use these for strawberries. And you can see that they're just doing really well here in December. Let's just walk back through so you can see different angles, the way that I have all the trellising set up. I can really put a lot of plants in here because of the different types of trellises. Here's another example of just two T posts. This is actually jute. I grew the beans right up that. Some more posts in here, some basic fencing, and I was weaving a cherry tomato up this. This is for a hoop house, but you get the idea. There's just so many things that you can bring and repurpose. And I would also recommend trying to think a little bit out of the box. Like if you went to a nursery and you wanted to buy you know, maybe something like this. It's gonna cost you so much money versus going and finding the pieces at the big box stores and making it yourself. Repurposing, like if you bought these for the purpose of trellising, they're gonna cost you twice as much than going to uh, Lowe's or Home Depot or Walmart and just buying the closet racks or finding them at a yard sale or at a repurposing store. Like Habitat for Humanity, there's a lot of those nonprofits around and they just bring in all this excess supplies for building and you can go in there and find what you need to repurpose for your garden. This is the concrete mesh again. You know, serves a great purpose. 
Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com and subscribe. I will really... <laughs> All right, so I needed to cut in because I wanted an even 40 examples. I'm going to be doing a separate video on this. If you're growing in containers, fabric pots, sometimes it's hard to get the support that you need. Like you could grow a tomato plant in this size container. If you take three stakes, place them in one, two, three, forget that's in the middle right now, and you would just close these over, tie them off at the top, you get a nice TP. The stake, the post will push out towards the container. It's going to be nice and stable. The reason you have to do this is because you don't have a lot of soil in there. So these can fall over easily once the, the trellis or the staking becomes weighted. If you need something bigger, down the middle, put a larger post because you can continue up that. And by securing all of them together, it makes a nice stable kind of tripod, TP type trellis or staking for bigger plants. You can also take this into the earth beds and you just set up something that looks like that, but you would be putting it into maybe a container like that or out into your earth. Nice and stable, a great way to trellis and stake bigger plants. And please subscribe. I really do a complete video series from start to finish, January through December, and hopefully I can give you some ideas that you can use in your garden. Thanks so much for watching.